So I was thinking about love the other day and a, a question came to my mind. Why do we have to work so hard for love? Like, I, I, why is it so much work? And then I realized we don't have to work hard for love. So then why, why do I have to do all this work in marriage? So then that led me to this conclusion. Marriage is not about love. And I know a lot of people think that marriage is about love, but marriage, it can't be about love. Because if marriage was about love, like if God created marriage and the purpose of it is love, then he would need to make it okay for us to divorce when someone's not loving us. Like that wouldn't be fair. If, if, if the purpose of marriage is love and I'm married to someone and they're not loving me, why would I have to stay? Right. But that's not how it works. So then what's the purpose of marriage? That's what I was thinking. So if we go back to the beginning in Genesis, when I look at the, the first marriage, here's what I believe. Marriage is for the purpose of having a life partner to do life work. Not just laughs and orgasms, but the life work of making the world a better place. The work of caring for someone other than yourself, right? The work of learning to love the way God loves. If everyone focused more on what they're giving than what they're getting, the whole divorce rate and marriage overall would turn around. Think about it. If I was if we're in a relationship and I'm truly committed to giving you my best, if I'm truly committed to loving you, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to be diligent about doing my personal work so that I can be better, so that I can love you more authentically and deeply. But that ain't what we do. We're overly concerned about what we're getting. We have this what I call uh, Janet Jackson mindset about marriage. What have you done for me lately? Right. That's called pride. And pride is at the root of 100 percent of divorces. So the thing is, your marriage is not about what you get. Your marriage is about what you give. And I know that doesn't sound attractive. Right. It sounds more attractive when when it's about me and my needs. But that's not how God designed it. So here's what I realized as I was thinking about all this. I realized, OK, I need to focus on what I'm giving to my wife more than what I'm getting from her. But when I had that thought, almost immediately, there was resistance in my mind. And so then now I'm like, okay, wait a minute, that's interesting. Why is there resistance? So then that got me to thinking, why is it so difficult to focus more on her needs than my needs? Like for you, like why is it so hard for you to focus more on what you're giving then what you're getting, the answer is because you're needy. Now, I, I used to think that being needy was not a bad thing. Like, I thought being needy, just it's just the human condition. Like, all of us are needy because we have needs. That's what being needy means. You need stuff. But that ain't true. So I recently looked it up in the dictionary, and needy actually means to be in want or to be uh, poverty-stricken, right? To have a deficit. And so when I read that, I'm like, OK, uh, being needy is not a good thing. It's not a normal thing. It's actually a dysfunctional thing. So then the next question becomes, well, how does a person become needy? Here's the answer. And it is the the whole point of this message. When you have unmet emotional needs, usually from childhood, you will show up to adulthood needy. Or as I like to frame it, love deficient. I'm going to say it again. When you show up to adulthood with emotional needs that were not met in childhood, you're going to show up love deficient. You're going to show up needy. So here's the thing. All humans have 10 core emotional needs that we have. All of us. OK, um, they're built in. They're wired in. Now, with these 10 emotional needs, not all of them carry the same weight for everybody. Right. And it can fluctuate throughout your life. What's more important at one point in your life may be less important in another part. But all of us have all 10. And because we have all 10, all 10 of them need to be met on a consistent basis. 
right? So when they're not met in childhood, you show up to adulthood love deficient, okay? And, and I like to describe it like this. Imagine you have 10 cups inside of you, right? To hold these emotional needs. When they're not, when those needs are not met in childhood, you keep the cup, but the cup now has a hole in it. And uh, so when you get married, your partner pouring into that cup, it just, it, it's, it'll never satisfy because there's a hole in your cup and you got to fix that. But that's for another message. I'm not, I'm gonna talk about that later. So you got these 10 core needs. Now you being unaware or denying that you have emotional needs does not make them go away. So just because you're unaware that you have unmet emotional needs don't mean that the needs are not there. I hope I hope that makes sense to you. Right. Because I have so many people who come into my office and they act like they are needless. And I try to tell them in so many words, hey, that's not possible. You're a human being. But what it does tell me is that they're pushing away needs that they need to be embracing. If your emotional needs were not met as a child, you are going to as an adult, you're going to be hyper focused on getting those needs met. Meaning you're going to be selfish, meaning you're going to be prideful. You won't have a choice because it's not like most folk who are prideful. They don't make a decision. You know what? I'm going to be selfish. Like when you do that, you're being you know facetious. But I'm talking about everyday life, the way you operate. You will be more self-centered than normal because you got these needs and you got to get them met. But. Uh, they're in your subconscious. And so your behavior, which comes from your subconscious, is going to like exude the insecurity, the, the uncertainty that you have because these emotional needs were not met. Let's look at let's look at acceptance, for example. That's one of the core needs. Right? That's one of the 10. Let's look at acceptance. Uh, acceptance is acceptance means being accepted by your parents for who you are, not for what you do. Right. They accept you as you being you. You're unique. You don't have to do anything to get love from me. You don't have to do anything to earn it. Right. It's just yours. For those of you that believe that you were accepted. OK, that's cool. But here's my question. Does your behavior line up with what you believe your childhood reality was? All right. Like your, your current behavior in your relationship. Does it line up? with what you believe your childhood reality was. Like, are you, do, do you work too much? Are you a workaholic? Uh, do you fear rejection as if like, like you feel like something is, is not right with you, like something is wrong with you, like I'm not good enough? You know, do you, do you find yourself seeking attention or needing constant approval and it's never enough? Those are things you need to pay attention to because all of those find their root in a lack of acceptance. And I know, to be honest, uh, a lot of those find their roots in a lot of uh, several, I'll say several, several of the unmet emotional needs of the 10, like it, several of them. Right. So my point in saying this is my point here is pay attention to your baby. You may you may feel like oh, I'm good. I, my childhood was fine. I didn't go through anything, but pay attention to your behavior. OK. And then if your behavior says, hey, there's something going on, pay attention to your behavior, not what you say to yourself. So let me share this with you um, as I end. Let me share this uh, something that happened the other day and just kind of share with you where I am on this whole thing. So so I'm in my office the other day and, uh, you know, and I work from home. Right. So it's the middle of the day and I'm hungry because I hadn't eaten. And so uh, I I don't know if I called or text my wife, but I asked her you know, hey, what time are you going to cook? Because she had took some meat out, so I knew she was going to cook, so I was asking her what time. She said, oh, I'm going to cook about five or six. And I was a little disappointed because, like, I was hungry right then. I was like, okay, cool. And I was thinking, you know, I'll go fix myself something in a few minutes. So I continued to work, but then I started to smell food. And I was like, hmm. When I smelt the food, there was a feeling that came over me that felt like love. That made me pause. I'm like, wait a minute. Why, when I smelt the food, did I get a message that I'm loved? Like, where would that come from? Why does her cooking translate 
to me that she loves me or that she cares about me? What if she doesn't care about me, but she's cooking? Now, that ain't true, but I'm just I'm just thinking in my head. How does her cooking for me translate to her loving me? What if she don't like me at all, but she's cooking? Right. What if she loves me and she don't cook? Does that mean she doesn't love me? So this is what I'm processing. And what I realize is, bro, you made that up like you made up in your mind that her cooking for you is is love. So then that got me to thinking, as you can see, I, I think a lot. Right. My thinks my, my thinks <laughs> my my thoughts is like a train and they connect. So then that got me to thinking. OK, so. Since I'm making that up and and this happened kind of around the same time that I'm having, I was having all these other thoughts that I was sharing earlier that made me create this video. So, so here's my conclusion. I said, okay, from now on, whenever I feel anything negative, whether I, whether, I, whether, whether my wife did something wrong to me or not, whether I feel lonely, whether I feel unheard, unseen, um, rejected, whatever I feel, my first response is to look in the mirror instead of at my wife. Now, that's what I decided. My first response is to look in the mirror and see, is there an emotional need that's not being met, that, that wasn't met in my childhood that I need to deal with? Why? Because here's what I discovered. About 80% of the issues that we have with our partner, really our issue and it's childhood stuff, unmet emotional needs. And then watch this, the other 20%, the other, tw the other 20% when I'm emotionally whole and healthy won't require a level 10 response, whatever it is. If she cursed me out, my wife don't curse, right? So it's just an example. But if my wife cursed me out, if I'm emotionally whole and healthy, it will not require a level 10 response. So my point is, I made the decision that I have to focus more on my work instead of blaming her for what I'm going through. In other words, if I could just be completely clear, I'm not going to blame her for my neediness. I'm going to work on my neediness so that I can love her more authentically. So here's my question. Last question for you. Why are you so needy? Like, and what are you going to do about it? Okay. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that uh, this encourages you to do whatever work you need to do to become your best self so that you can love at a much deeper level. What are you going to change? When are you going to address your issues and stop blaming your partner? All right. Yeah. So I hope this was good for you. I hope this was uh, encouraging. And listen, I pray that God, uh, I pray that God's favor rests on your life in 2023. Y'all take care.